after doing a recap of the Stephen Boltzmann principle of radiation and questions related to that, uh, uh, we will move on to Newton's law of cooling and also another uh, principle called the spectral emissive power. Okay, and with this, we will complete the section of heat transfer today. <coughs> so let's begin. Right, so as I told you, what we were discussing last time was that any surface which is at surface temperature capital T which is in Kelvins and of surface area S okay. In a surrounding temperature, okay, let's say T naught, it has two important aspects to its uh, relation of radiation. So Stephen Boltzmann law, Stephen's law of radiation, simply. It states that the emissive power E, which is the rate of emission per unit surface area. Okay, so it is in joules per meter square per second or watts per meter square. So that emissive power is given by the formula emissivity into Stephen's constant into the surface temperature to the power pole. This was the first important equation we had seen. Then we had seen that the same surface is also in the process of absorption. So along with the emissive power, it also has the property of absorption. <clears throat> so the absorptive power this is <clears throat> the rate of absorption per unit surface area. So again, this is in joules per second per meter square or watts per meter square. So this absorptive power A is given by the absorptivity into Stephen's universal constant into the surrounding temperature in Kelvin to the power four. So in both these important formulae, sigma is the universal constant, which is called the 
स्टीफन्स कॉन्स्टेंट it is a universal constant that means it does not depend on any other factor and e is emissivity e is absorptivity so these are both material properties of the surface so this universal constant sigma was a, approximately equal to 5.67 into 10 raised to power minus 8 watts per meter square kept Kelvin to the power four. Okay. So you don't need to memorize this value, but it will be given to you in a question paper when you're solving NEET or boards paper, whatever be the case. So this is about the individual rate of emission and the individual rate of absorption. okay now based on this we had seen three different scenarios okay one is if the surface temperature <coughs> is equal to the surrounding temperature okay. 
then we had seen that the concerned surface or the body of which the surface belongs should be in thermal equilibrium with the surrounding so in this case what it means is that the net rate of heat exchange by radiation it should be zero so that basically means that the rate of emission therefore loss should be equal to the rate of absorption so that means e into sigma into surface area into temperature to the power 4 surface temperature to the power 4 should always be equal to absorptivity into sigma into the same surface area but into surrounding temperature to the power 4 when t is equal to t not okay so these two quantities should be equal when t is equal to t not so that gave us the important result that e is equal to e so that shows that the emissivity has the identical value as absorptivity now of course you know this fact that e is equal to a is equal to 1 for a black body whereas e is equal to a will be a quantity less than 1 for any other material so basically emissive power for a black body is equal to sigma into t to the power 4 whereas emissive power for any other real body is e into sigma into t to the power 4 so you can also see that e is the ratio of emissive power of the given body or material with respect to emissive power of black body compared at common temperature or similarly absorptive power is equal to sorry absorptivity is equal to absorptive power of a given body divided by absorptive power of a black body at a common surrounding temperature t not So that is, if you compare any given body with any given the perfect black body, such that both of them are at surface temperature T, and sorry, and both of them are at surrounding temperature T now. so this statement here is a universal fact for all materials
<coughs> okay. Now the next situation we had seen. was if the temperature of the surface is greater than the temperature of the surrounding then what is happening is that the then the body in concern will lose heat to the surrounding so the net rate of heat loss okay minus dq by dt that will be equal to the rate of emission minus the rate of absorption so we had seen that this is equal to e sigma into surface area into t to the power 4 minus t naught to the power 4. Okay. The minus sign here is to show that it is a rate of heat loss. So this side is the rate of heat loss for it because it's cooling down at that rate. The right hand side, you can see that T is greater than T naught. And of course, we have taken into account the fact that E is equal to A. Emissivity is equal to absorptivity for the given material. Whereas the same thing, if you look at the situation where the surrounding temperature is greater than the temperature of the body, then the body will gain heat. It will heat up instead of cooling down. Here it cools down with time. So in that case, the net rate of heat gain given by E sigma into surface area into T naught to the power 4 minus T to the power 4. So these were the application situations. Okay, and we had seen a couple of numerical examples of this. Okay, Anjuman, I'll scroll up.
all right so we will look at an interesting type of question now related to this okay anshuman so done with this part also now Okay, finish writing this. Done, sir. Okay. So, Anshuman finished with this part also? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Let's uh, look at an example next. So now in these examples, we will start to combine situations where there is radiation as well as conduction. So let's look at some situation like this. Okay, so I'll just explain the geometry in a moment. So what is happening here is, let's say we have something like a furnace. Okay. Whose inside is maintained at a temperature. Of let's say 500 kelvins, so pretty hot temperature. Okay. Now there is a rod 
okay, this is a metallic rod so the metal has thermal conductivity let's say 200 watts per meter kelvin it has a length of say 2 meter and a cross sectional area of 10 centimeters square and it also has insulation from the outside so this entire thing it has insulation from the outer surface but this open face outside this one is exposed to the environment So this is all insulation. This is all insulation. But notice that this surface is an open face. Okay. And this surface is also an open face of, okay. So now what is observed is that, and also given to us that the surrounding temperature, the atmospheric temperature is 300 Kelvin. So this is the surrounding atmospheric temperature. So now what is observed is that at thermal equilibrium or at steady state, the two faces, the two open faces of the metallic rod are at 500 Kelvin for the one inside the furnace and 400 Kelvin for the face outside okay, open to the atmosphere so this is what is observed so we have to find the rate of heat conduction across the length of the rod that's the first thing and then we have to find out the rate of emission and absorption at the open surface or the open face outside. And from that, we have to find out the emissivity of the metal. Now also for this, we, have, we are given that we have to take the value of Stephen's constant, the universal Stephen's constant as a rounded of value 6 into 10 raised power minus 8 watts per meter square Kelvin to the power 4. Take this value of 
sigma. Okay. So just try and go through this question and interpret it properly. We will discuss this soon. So this is this surface is at a temperature T2. So at steady state, this T2 is 400 Kelvin, whereas the surrounding temperature of the atmosphere is 300 Kelvin. So that is happening because there is a net rate of heat loss because of radiation at the open surface. Okay. Whereas from the left side to the right side of the conductor, heat is coming via heat current, via you know, via conduction, which is the process we've discussed in the last few lectures before this. Okay. So you have to interpret how, how in the same system, there is two types of heat transfer that is occurring. Conduction from this side to this side, okay, from the left to the right side of the rod. And at the open surface of the rod over here, there is radiation that is occurring. So we have to interpret it accordingly. Okay. So just try out this question. We will discuss.
okay so let us understand and verify your answers for the first part so first part is just formula based you can see that the heat current or delta q by delta t by conduction across the rod that is given by the formula temperature difference divided by thermal resistance or thermal resistance is l upon k so this becomes k a by l into t1 minus t2 okay so this so this becomes equal to now so it's given as 200 watts per meter kelvin area was 10 cm square so from this much in meter square divided by the length which was 2 meters into the temperature difference which is 500 minus 400 okay so this is according to the data which is given above you can see the length of the rod is 2 meters the area of cross section is 10 cm square so this becomes 2 into 10 raised power minus 1 from here divided by 2 into 100 so that becomes 10 watts or 10 joules per second so this is the rate of conduction so is expecting more people to have got the answer for this directly anyway now let's come to the second part so the rate of emission will be equal to surface area into msf power which is given to us as 10 cm square into msf power okay which is e into sigma into in this case t2 to the power 4 because the surface is at temperature t2 and that is equal to 400 kelvin okay so the rate of emission by radiation at the surface is equal to e sigma into that surface area which i am writing as capital s now into t2 to the power 4 so in this the thing which is unknown is emissivity sigma is given to us as 6 into 10 raised power minus 8 the surface area is given to us as 10 cm square and t2 is given to us as 400 kelvin to the power 4 so emissivity is unknown but the rest of the things we can substitute like this so we'll come back to this so this is 6 into 4 to the power 4 Okay, into ten raised power minus eight minus three plus eight. Okay, so that is emissivity into six into two fifty six into ten raised power minus three watts or joules per second. Okay. So this is the rate of emission. So in this we still need to find out what is the value of emissivity. Without that we don't have a numerical answer. So we'll coming to that point. Point. Okay. Now note down up to here. Next thing I want you to calculate is the rate of absorption. Okay. So next thing after this, what about the rate of absorption? Okay. And from that we will calculate.
calculate the net rate of heat loss. So now you have to connect those two concepts. Okay, the net rate of heat loss concept. You have to connect it along with the rate of conduction because remember the rod is in steady state. So the temperature of that surface is remaining constant. T two. T two is remaining constant at four hundred Kelvin. So you have to connect that concept now. Okay, so now see, just the way we have calculated the rate of emission. Remember, according to Stephen's law, there is always absorption also happening. Okay, so the rate of absorption. Okay, at the open surface, or at the open face, okay, of the rod on that side, delta Q by delta T by absorption. That will be equal to what the surface area into absorptivity, okay, or sorry, absorptive power. So that absorptive power E is equal to absorptivity into sigma into surface temperature to the power four, where remember E is equal to E for any material. So this thing, delta Q by delta T by absorption. That becomes E sigma into surface area into T naught to the power four, where E is equal to E, but its value is unknown as of now. So this thing becomes that unknown value of E into again six into ten raised power minus eight into the same surface area okay, into three hundred to the power. So this time this becomes e into six into eighty one into ten days power minus three in watts or joule per second.
Okay, so now that we have got these two things, the rate of emission and the rate of absorption, albeit the value of E is still unknown. Okay, now we can see the concept that at steady state, okay, the temperature T2 of the open phase is constant. Okay. Now that's the most important thing to understand in this question. That why the temperature of this open phase is constant. Okay. If it is losing heat because of emission, then why not the temperature is changing? Why not the temperature is decreasing? Because it is losing heat by radiation. Okay. But that's because it is also gaining heat by conduction. So simultaneously conduction is bringing in heat, radiation is making it lose heat. Okay. So the rate of conduction okay. so this is happening because the rate of conduction is equal to the net rate of heat loss. by radiation. Okay. So this heat current which is coming in is equal to the net rate of heat loss. Okay. That's why the temperature of this is remaining stable. So this heat current we had seen earlier was So this heat current was Ka by L into T1 minus T2. And this net rate of heat loss is equal to E sigma into surface area. In this case, T2 to the power 4 minus T0 to the power 4. Okay. So this we had already calculated. This was it was 10 joules per second or 10 watts. But this is equal to that unknown emissivity into six into 10 raised power minus three, but this is a T1 factor here and this factor is 256, right? Because we have this, the net rate of heat loss by radiation is equal to this okay so that is equal to e sigma s into t2 to the power 4 minus t0 to the power 4 okay so it becomes that unknown emissivity into stephens constant into surface area this calculation we've already done so i'm not repeating it okay so that's how that becomes this factor over here this whole thing becomes this factor. So from this, we'll be able to work out the emissivity. It is 10 divided by 6 into this factor, which is now how much? Uh, 175, is it? Yeah. Into 10 raised power minus 3. Okay, so that is the value of emissivity that we'll get.
there is just a small change in the data of the question just a moment i have given you one information wrong in the question so just make this correction people the length of the conductor should be 20 cm and not 2 meters okay so i'll just make this correction here so this factor this will become 20 cm so it will become 0.2 meters okay so this will become 100 watts or 100 joules per second okay so we're just making this small adjustment i had given the length to be 2 meters so cancel that and make that 20 cm that was wrong okay the original question it was supposed to be 20 cm not 2 meters so there is slight adjustment here this will become 100 watts okay just a minute let me check again sorry it's 20 meters okay not 20 cm so this should become 20 in this okay so this should become 20 so this will be 1 watt One joule per second. Yeah. So this should be one watt is equal to this. Okay. So this will give us a value of emissivity, which is uh, going to be. Zero point nine five. So emissivity is equal to absorptivity, is equal to zero point nine five. And when we substitute this back in the second part's answers, we will get the values of rate of emission and rate of absorption numerically. Okay, so hope this is clear.
Okay, so this is about this. Now let's come to the next section, which is Newton's law of cooling. So Newton's law of cooling is basically an experimental law which states that any body whose surface temperature is T, And the surrounding temperature is T naught. So if the surface temperature T of a body is T naught plus delta T, where delta T is small compared to T naught. in mind that both these temperatures are in kelvins so if this condition is satisfied okay then the rate of cooling is directly proportional to the temperature difference. So this is the statement that rate of cooling is directly proportional to temperature difference. This we can state in this way that the rate at which the temperature of the body is coming down, it should be directly proportional to delta T. So this is the way of expressing it mathematically. This is the rate of cooling this is the temperature difference with respect to the surrounding okay but remember that this is true for the condition that delta t is small compared to the surrounding temperature only. For example, if the temperature of the body is, let's say, 305 Kelvin, and the temperature of the surrounding is 300 Kelvin. So that means the temperature difference between the surrounding is 5 Kelvin. So delta T is very small compared to T naught because this is 5. And this is 300. Okay, so in this case, Newton's law of cooling will be applicable.
the rate of cooling is dq by dt The rate of cooling is dq by dt. So, Okay, so let us look at an example. So, we have this body at a surface temperature T. So, given that the surrounding temperature is 27 degrees C. Okay, now, initially, The surface temperature is equal to 32 degrees C and the rate of cooling is 0 0.2 Kelvin per minute. Now, when the surface temperature, just a minute, people, I'll be right back. Okay, so when the surface when the surface temperature has dropped to 30 degrees C what is the rate of cooling okay very simple direct question just try this out sir we have done this
Yeah, anybody got the answer for this? So first of all, you have to see whether Newton's law of cooling is applicable or not. So for that, first of, remember that the temperature should be converted to Kelvin. So this is 300 Kelvin, okay? And this is 305 Kelvin, okay? So when T is equal to 305 Kelvin, the difference in temperature, which is 5 Kelvin, is very small compared to the surrounding temperature. Because the surrounding temperature is 300 Kelvin. So Newton's law of cooling is applicable. Okay. So therefore, rate of cooling is directly proportional to temperature difference. So you can say that this rate of cooling, which is 0 0.2 Kelvin per minute, is equal to some constant multiplied by 5 Kelvin. So now when the temperature becomes 30 degrees. So that is how much? That is three hundred and three Kelvin. Okay. So when the temperature is three hundred and three Kelvin, that time the temperature difference becomes. Kelvin. Okay. So the new rate of cooling is equal to the same constant but into a new temperature difference. So that becomes equal to So now you compare this equation with this equation. And you'll get the required answer.
Okay, so comparing the two, you can see that if you just divide equation two by equation one, Okay, survey shall explain what is the difference between the two. Rate of heat loss is in joules per second and rate of cooling is in Kelvin per second. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Rate of cooling is the rate at which the temperature is reducing. And rate of heat loss So this is in joules per second. This is in Kelvin per second. So this becomes our final answer. Is it clear, Sarvesh? Okay, now let us understand the relation of Newton's law of cooling and Stephen's law of radiation. There's obviously a connection between the two, so let's understand this. So now let us say we have a body of mass M, specific heat capacity S, okay. Surface area, say capital A, emissivity equal to E. Now its surface is at temperature P okay. and the surrounding temperature is T now. Okay. So if I go with Stephen's law, okay. the net rate of heat loss yeah, and I'm assuming that the surface temperature is greater than surrounding temperature. So it is loses heat, which means that it cools down. Okay. So net rate of heat loss
will be given by the formula E sigma into surface area, which I'm writing as A over here instead of S into T to the power four minus T naught to the power four. Now in this, note that dq is equal to ms dt. This is coming from the definition of specific heat capacity. So this much heat exchange causes this much temperature change. Okay. So just note down up to this point, we'll continue ahead. Then. Okay, so when we substitute this information here, we have minus dq by dt becomes equal to minus of ms So that gives us the relation that the rate of cooling according to Stephen Boltzmann law is quite different. The way I've written it here. Okay. But because it depends on T to the power four minus T naught to the power four. Okay. This is according to Stephen's Bolt Boltzmann law. So this part is a constant outside, but the relationship between the temperature of the surface and the temperature of the surrounding is not that it's directly proportional, but it's T to the power four minus T naught to the power four. So how does this agree with Newton's law of cooling? So we'll see that in the next step that Newton's law of cooling is for the specific condition that T minus T naught should not be large compared to T naught. It should be very small compared to T naught. So we'll now apply that condition next. Okay, so now if T is equal to T naught plus delta T such that Delta T is small compared to T naught. So this is a condition of Newton's law. So when we apply this condition, let's see what happens. Okay. So when we apply this condition, we can write T to the power four minus T naught to the power four as T naught plus Delta T to the power four minus T naught to the power four. And in this expression, we can take T naught to the power four common. So we'll have this. Okay. So just note down up to this step because then the next step is a little bit complicated. We'll apply binomial approximation. So just make sure you're familiar up to this step here. Then we'll continue ahead.
okay so next step let's see now in the next step further one plus delta t by t naught to the power four will be approximated as one plus four times delta t by t naught okay so this step here is the binomial approximation step which i'll explain here so this is a binomial x approximation method in which 1 plus x to the power n can be approximated as 1 plus n into x if x is very small compared to 1. So 1 plus delta t by t naught to the power 4 is approximated as 1 plus 4 times delta t by t naught because delta t by t naught is very small compared to 1 because delta t was very small compared to t naught. Okay. So that's the next step. So now coming back to this here, okay, in this minus dt by dt, the rate of cooling becomes E sigma A upon ms into t naught to the power 4 to 1 plus delta t by t naught to the power 4 minus 1. Now, next step, we apply this approximation. Here. So, this becomes one plus four delta t upon t naught minus one. So open out this bracket now and one cancels out. So finally, you can see that the rate of cooling is four times emissivity into Stephens constant into A upon MS okay, into T naught cube because there's a T naught in the denominator. This whole thing multiplied by delta T. So it is basically a constant multiplied by delta T. So that is showing you that the rate of cooling is directly proportional to the temperature difference, provided of course delta T is very small compared to T naught. Because this approximation is applied over here because delta T by T naught is very small compared to 1. Okay. And that is exactly the statement of Newton's law of cooling. So now you can see that. Stephens Boltzmann law reduces to Newton's law of cooling. Okay. Provided the condition for Stephens Boltzmann law, I mean, the condition for Newton's law of cooling, the delta T is very small compared to T naught, is satisfied. Provided that condition is satisfied, it reduces.
Okay, so hope with this application it is clear how Newton's law of cooling reduces to, I mean, Stephen's law of radiation reduces to Newton's law of cooling, but provided the uh, condition that delta T is very small compared to T naught is satisfied. And survey just to repeat the point again, the relationship between rate of cooling or rate of temperature change and rate of heat exchange okay the relationship between these two is that dq is equal to c dt where c is heat capacity okay ms that is the relationship between these two okay. so this is in kelvin per second and this is in joules per second. And this relationship is, this is in joules. This is in Kelvin. So hope this is clear now. One is heat with respect to time. The other is temperature change with respect to time. Okay, people. So that's it for today's session. Next lecture, we will wind up uh, with some more questions and things, but we are done with the theory part most of, mostly. There's just one more uh, concept and formula, which is BN's displacement law and uh, spectral MSC power concept, which we'll see in the next lecture in a few minutes. And, and then we'll spend most of the time doing questions. And also, if you have any doubts from the common test, which was postponed for you people, but must have been done by now. So you can discuss in the next lecture. Okay, so that's it for today. People wish you all the best.